Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. I want to extend the message of last night. It may appear different, but it is the same subject. But even before I start giving any kind of information, I want to identify the channel. It's really not an informational channel. There are times when great things are proposed that you haven't known. They're great because they reflect what the human can do. We talk about systems that maybe you didn't know and things that are happening to you that maybe you didn't know. And other times we just want to sit at your feet and talk to you. And that's all of you. There's great awareness of who listens. There is this multidimensional, timeless thing we talk about over and over that says we know the listener. When you, when you have to suspend the linearity of time and know that spirit knows the potential of who's going to listen. And then since these things are recorded, you have the specter of being in two places at the same time. You see, I'm talking to the listener no matter when they're listening. And to them, it's now. And yet to you, it's now. And let me ask you, whose now is correct? And the answer is all of you. There are these kinds of things that we look at, especially in energy. There's been lots of questions and answers this day of my partner, of me, for I am with my partner. He started to tell a story and never did of what happened to him five years ago. It actually wasn't five. My partner is more like eight. <laughs> when he stopped compartmentalizing cryon. Humanity does this. They look at their relationship with spirit and they segment it. There's a place to worship, a time to worship, what you wear when you worship, a day to worship. You come and you go, you schedule it. And we've said that before. My partner was doing the same thing. Some of you are doing the same thing. When he sat in the chair, he changed because he had to bring in me. The group that is called the cryon, that is an energy from the other side of the veil that can communicate with you basically through love. And he had to get ready for it. He actually had to leave the room and come back for it. Many people remember these times. I asked him, is he ready for the next step? He didn't know there was one. He thought he had arrived at the last step. <laughs> there is no last step. You're always, always going to another one. And he asked what it was. And I said, how would you like to be with that which is your higher self and me all the time. I can remember his answer. Partly comedic, but there was truth. He said, will it hurt? <laughs> Partly reality, will it hurt? And what he meant by that, will it hurt the flow of my life? Can I still be me? as though a magnificent thing would be bad. And then we ask him to try it. It became a meld where no matter where he is or what question he is asked, he delivers the answer from that part of him which is connected to me. In these sessions, some of you can feel it when he flips between Lee and Cryon. Those who discern 
can see the light in him change. And this is the invitation, an extension of the last channel we gave you. If God is inside, why do you compartmentalize it? How many of you can meditate while you shop? <laughs> Some of you feel that in itself is a form of meditation. But the question is this, can you multitask with God? Can you be at work or an assignment or something that you're doing because this is what you do? And at the same time, you're involving the grandness of creation. Do you separate them to the extent that one does not belong to the other and then when you're done, then you can have a nice meditation? Have you mastered the art of being awake and meditating and being connected to spirit even when you drive so that it's not dangerous? Did you know that was possible? Some of you know more and it's possible you do it. You don't have to leave your body. You don't have to be someplace that, it, that is what they would call non-concentration. But you can multitask. Even accountants be crunching their numbers and at the same time be aware of their divinity. Because it can be 24-7 all the time. Humans have not been built for this. And the reason is because that which you call human nature, your society, your training, your culture, has always segmented everything. A time to eat, time to play, time to work. Time to worship. time for happiness and sadness and as this meld begins all of those things also meld if you start this process and you understand what I'm saying the compassionate part of you starts to be involved no matter where you are no matter what you do it's almost like an extended worship service where you would pray, meditate, sing, feel the presence of God in everything you do. And you would not be worshiping an entity or even a God. You'd be worshiping the joy that you have. You would be grateful that now you can have something all the time and not just once in a while or not just on the schedule. Crying, is it possible we can be, be connected when we sleep? What you don't know is you've always been connected when you sleep. That's part of that multidimensionality of your dreams where they go everywhere. And you can't make any kind of linear sense in so many of them. Your brain disengages. And part of spirit then will be with you in ways it is not when you're awake. Awakeness often creates survival. Awareness of who is there and why they are there and how you can move around and be safe. Can you do that and still be connected to spirit? And the answer is yes, completely, totally. I want you to revisit your own Akash. There were times, dear ones, eons ago, when you really were in survival. You really did carry a spear. You really did have something, perhaps, to live in you wouldn't recognize today. And I want to tell you what the indigenous believe, that God is in everything, in the animal that is about to be sacrificed, and the plants that grow for your nourishment. And every step you take, Gaia is with you. The meld was complete 
And that has been lost. And now we rekindle that meld, but in this new energy, it goes far beyond this. It starts to enhance the intuition and synchronicity. Who will you meet and when? I speak to a room full of people. It is there now. And I say to this room filled with people, did you meet somebody you didn't know? today and did you learn anything you didn't know from them did you recognize them not as former family members not as profound Akashic things but as member of a soul group called the creative source could you see you in them could you relate could you be empathetic to the point where you could join them often and know that you'd be safe and fine. Synchronicity works this way. You're pulled together from places that are very different. For commonality, you have come to the room to hear the channeling, to enjoy the energy, to be with others of like mind. And now let's add the last one, to always expect synchronicity with people you don't know there are those who had answers for you today if you took the time to meet them the situations and issues that you've asked about and wondered about synchronicity is the new key intuition will push and pull you not karma to come to these kinds of meetings and other areas where you will meet those who are there to meet you. And how are you going to enhance that? How do you know where to go? And the answer is the meld. The last channeling asks you to stop looking for an exterior God and start looking inward to an interior God so that your meditations would begin differently. Dear spirit inside. Dear God inside. And when you say those things out loud, the very cells of your body celebrate the fact that you know it. It's almost like they're saying, they're awake. They know about us. Finally, the integration begins. The meld is the invitation. To carry around that part of you which is divine, that you feel is God, whatever that is. To carry it into the most unlikely places. What you do, where you go. As you drive, as you walk, as you shop, as you eat, as you talk. And dear ones, when you do that, things change. You're healthier, did you know that? You can't segment and remove spirit from your cellular structure and only visit it when you want to and expect balance in your cells. Your cells crave this. The balance of bodies crave this. The missing piece, the element that's always been something that has been mysterious and people have asked about over and over. How can I this? How can I that? Your name goes here. How can I go this? What's next? You're not melded yet, or you wouldn't ask. The melded human being is one who is super intuitive and don't even know it. They just know what they should do, where they should go, and what's next. That's the meld that we speak of. This creates the new human who is starting to appreciate and understand that spirituality is not removed from the corporate, corporeal human being. The corporeal human being. Can you do this 
in a corporate structure? <laughs> Can you go to work? Can you go to committee meetings? Can you meet the boss? And have God inside. Now some people say, no. <laughs> I've got to leave spirit at the door when I go into the office. As though spirit was not there. I hear this all the time from humanity. And they would say, you have no idea what I have to go through. As though we weren't there. <laughs> Next to you the whole time. Even in your statements in meditation, you don't know we're there. You've isolated and compartmentalized yourself so much that you have to try to explain to spirit in your meditations what you need, as though we were never there. <laughs> the one who melds, don't get this wrong, the one who melds, may find themselves meditating less because they have changed the nomenclature of meditation. 24-7 meditation. Always connected, no matter what you're doing. Always meditating because you have God inside. Always thinking like a meditator because you have God inside. No more isolation. No more, no more scheduling a meeting with God in a place where you know God is. Instead, you know where God is inside you. 24-hour meditation with your eyes open going to work. Is this really possible? Now, those who are meditation specialists are a little nervous with this message. Because the old paradigm says there must be a dedicated concentration in order to achieve a certain state of esotericness. And I would like to tell you something. They're right in an older energy. They're right in an older energy. And the proof of this is what meditation creates in your body. It creates healthiness. It creates longer living. It creates that which is less anxious. It actually spreads into the ground around you. They're right. And now we're saying it's changing. A meld creates a different kind of meditation, but the results are the same. You won't be meditating as much in the way you used to. Instead, you will be meditating every second of your existence. Everywhere you concentrate and look, you will see God there. You will think about spiritualness not in the same way. You won't be concentrating on some elusive thing and trying to bring it to you because it's already there. And instead, you will readjust how you look at everything. How you look at a tree or chair or wood. How it's connected in some way to you. You will look at your own soul differently. You will start to understand your eternal. That even after that part, which others call your passing, you're still here because you will be biological and you'll continue the journey you have before you will again. You start to see your own life differently. The fears that were drummed into you will start to leave. You'll understand that you can have empathy for the planet, but it doesn't have to control your emotions. You can see injustice, and it doesn't have to make you sob and cry and not sleep. Instead, you can see that, and you can send energy to that part of it that needs energy because of the God inside. You're meditating. 
You don't have to become part of the problem to work with the problem. You have to be in that mode that says all things that are happening are here and happening and what I am is the catalyst to compassion around them. I can put them in a bubble of love and the result will be that others will feel it and that eventually those things will morph and change and then when you have enough doing it together what a difference it's all changing who am I really speaking to here the old soul the one who would want to meditate at all who recognizes the power of it the appropriateness of it the majesty of it and the message is clear God inside the meld is here change the very definition of meditation because now it is really getting powerful because you are the source instead of visiting it concentrating on it and using it you become it that's power it's all part of this message that we gave last night getting rid of the exterior and bringing it inside the message is about energy who are you really lastly who are you really old soul the very thing that would bring you to the room meditator listen the very thing that would bring you to meditate is God inside who are you an old soul on the planet will say well I've been here a very very long time I've lived a lot of lives let's go beyond that who are you let's talk to the one who's listening right now who's a first timer who is not an old soul who are you let me take you on a trip at a level that is beyond the soul when you join other souls and you're not here you become part of an amalgamated energy a soul group that has no singularity or identity that is linear you are part of the soup of creation the energy of the universe looking at the galaxy that's who you are that means you were here when the earth was created what if I told you that every single one of you in whatever form you can imagine was standing there at the very creative event when the universe was put together the galaxy started its journey where time meant nothing and the clock didn't tick and the idea of ancient was not even in the language of God it just was and you saw the collision of objects you saw the earth created you saw the moon created and the whole time you knew the Pleiadians were coming that group of ascended beings from far away who also had God inside just like you do almost like your spiritual parents not space people but spiritual people people not aliens people who would eventually come here and seed you in a way that would be magnificent to bring you to this place where the shift is happening where my partner could sit here where channeling is being listened to you were there when the earth was created you were there when the galaxy started spinning you got to see the 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 pair in the middle of the spinning galaxy not the singularity not a black hole but the push pull of the energy that no one has discovered yet and will you know how physics works you knew that someday 
you'd start your journey here. That's who you are. That goes apart from humans, doesn't it? Now we're talking about the essence of you. You're forever. And when you meld, I promise that one of the things that's going to happen is that the longer you live, the more you'll be aware that death itself is a paper tiger. <laughs> it's a transition, and all it does is create sorrow for those you left behind. That's all it does. It doesn't take you to a bad place. It takes you to a good place. You go home. And all that happens next is that you come back. The worst thing about death is not dying. It's those who are left behind and how they treat it and how you can prepare them to treat it. If you can cognize this with them too, they'll have a celebration. They'll celebrate you in your next incarnation. They'll celebrate all that you did while you were here. They will celebrate you into the beyond. And there will be tears of joy that you're eternal like they are. What a concept. A new kind of funeral. And it's coming. You're going to see it. This is an accelerated consciousness. Ways of thinking that are very different. And they're going to become common. Because universal truth is that way. I want to remind you in closing. There was a time on this planet when there were many gods. And it wasn't that long ago. Even when you're talking about three to four thousand years, which is nothing. There were multiple gods and arguments about which one is correct and real. Most of them were dysfunctional. And then something happened at the right time, in the right place. The earth got the news and accepted it almost universally over a small amount of time. Monotheism. One god for the planet. Today, there is one God for the planet. That is a consciousness shift. And so when we tell you there's going to come a time when you understand more about the way things work spiritually, even death and life, you're going to say, I don't think so. <laughs> well, I want you to readjust your thinking based upon what happened in the past. The earth shifted its whole focus because the truth spoke for itself. There is one God. And there'll be also the agreement that there's also one system of one God. And that one system is that humans have a soul that is eternal. And the eternalness of it is not something that goes to another place. It returns and celebrates its existence and improves the planet every time it comes. A beautiful system of soul return. And that will then be common on the planet, just like monotheism became common on the planet. It's coming. It will not then cancel or make systems wrong which you call spiritual they will simply adjust and you've seen it before they will adjust and still be as magnificent not everyone will then have to change their spirituality it simply will be a new truth that finds itself in its appropriate way into the systems you call organized religion things will get better because of this you're so singular so many of you listening now still believe that there's come a time when the earth is going to be the earth is going to be a u utopia and all spirituality will be seen as the same and there will be no dissension. 
<laughs> you will have free choice forever. And the free choice will create a variety of opinion. But today, if you ask somebody about monotheism, you'll say, of course, there's one God. The dissension is how to worship the one God. <laughs> that will then go away. And the realization that the oneness is for everyone and there is no right or wrong, there's just love. That will morph into something else, which will morph into something else if you connect and meld. Dear ones, in closing I will say this, you are at the cusp of new paradigm shift that is spiritual. And that part of what old souls know will work is this meld that I'm talking about. Creating something that is with you all the time, 24-7. Awake in the morning and celebrate your existence as you put your feet on the floor. When you go to sleep at night before you swing your feet onto the bed, celebrate the fact that God is inside and you're never alone and that death will never have a sting that you've been taught it would. I want you to think of your demise, which will always happen. Think of your demise, which will always happen, and smile. Can you do it? Because you're coming right back. And you continue, and you continue, and you continue. It's simply a transition. That's all it is. Call it a transition of love. Because that's what it feels like. You'll see. You've done it before. How many of you have a Kashic remembrance of passing over the veil? And you might say, well, I don't really remember that, Cryon. Oh, you will. And when you do, a whole other awareness will be yours. This is the beauty of what's happening here, slowly. <laughs>